Hey everybody, welcome to week six. This lesson's gonna be about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I'm so excited to talk to you about this because people wonder, why is the Holy Spirit so important and what part does he play in my growth? Well, you know, the scripture says that Jesus was talking to his disciples one day and he said, there's so much more I wanna teach you, but I can't do it right now. But here's the thing I'm gonna do. I'm gonna send the Holy Spirit to live inside of you and to lead you into all truth. After Jesus died in the cross and he rose from the dead, he met with his disciples and he said, I'm about to go back to the Father. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit to you. And just like John the Baptist, he baptized you with water, but I've come to baptize you in the Holy Spirit and power. And, and this, is, this is exactly what uh, we see happen in Acts chapter 1, right before Jesus goes back to heaven. In verse 4, it says, wait in Jerusalem until you receive the promise of the Father, this gift of the Holy Spirit. In verse 8, he tells them why they need to wait for the Holy Spirit to receive it. And it's the same reason he's telling us we need to seek for the baptism of the Holy Spirit as well. Now, I want you to understand that the baptism of the Holy Spirit isn't uh, something you get necessarily right at salvation. You can get it at salvation, but the Holy Spirit comes into your life when you get saved. But there's a second work. That is the empowerment of the Spirit in your life to be a witness. This is Acts 1.8. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So salvation is when you get saved, the Holy Spirit lives in your life, and you're going to heaven. That's straight up, that's it, okay? But then the Lord wants to give you the power to live the life as a witness and to see people get saved. That's the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It's a gift of empowerment. Now, what's really cool about it is when you get this gift, you not only get the power to be a witness, but you also receive the gift of being able to speak in tongues or to be able to pray in a language that God is speaking through you back to him 100% his will. Now, I know that you go, man, that is just some outlandish stuff. Yeah, it's pretty amazing that God said he wants this to be what we have, this uh, communication gift where God will pray through us uh, on our behalf for what we need to pray for. I mean, can you, you know, think about it. When I, when I'm get, uh, I'm in marriage, I'm married now, you know, and I, when I got married, I was kind of like going, man, I wish I could know how to make my wife feel happy. And so I would kind of love her the way I would want to be loved, which sounds like the smart thing to do. But sometimes I found out she doesn't really like to be loved the same way I, I like to be loved. My love language is touch and uh, words of affirmation. So like I might walk up to her and kind of like, you know, pat her on the bottom and say, hey, you're hot, you know, and that, <laughs> that would be my way of loving it. She's like going, uh, that doesn't really do that much loving for me, <laughs> you know, because she likes acts of service and time spent, quality time. So really the way she wants me to communicate love to her is sit down with her and talk to her for 30 minutes or go do the dishes and, and do the laundry, you know. So what I'm saying on that is God knows how we should pray. And haven't you ever thought, man, wouldn't it be so good if God could pray for me? Guess what? He can. So when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, not only do you get the power to be a witness, but according to Acts chapter 2, 1 through 4, when they got filled with the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. In Acts chapter 10, when, he is, when Peter's at Cornelius' house and he prays for them to receive the baptism, they get baptized in the Holy Spirit and they speak in tongues. In Acts chapter 19, when Paul is at Ephesus and he ministers to the disciples there and he asks them, have you received the baptism of the Holy Spirit? They said, we haven't even got, know that there is a Holy Spirit. He prays for them, lays hands on them, they get filled with the Holy Spirit and they speak in tongues. Every time somebody was baptized in the Holy Spirit, they spoke in tongues. And that, that's just a heavenly language. How do we know that? 1 Corinthians 13 verse 1 says that we can speak in tongues of men and angels. That means it may be another language. For instance, just to use this for instance, as example, is I don't know how to speak Chinese, but could God speak through me in Chinese? He could. If he could do that, if and speak Latin through me or speak uh, in another language that I haven't learned, that's true. That's the tongues of men. But also there are angelic languages that we don't know or understand or how to speak in, but God speaks those languages through us back to himself, the prayers that we need to be praying. 
And that's a, a powerful gift that even in Mark chapter 16, he says, anybody who believes in me and follows me, these are the gifts and these are the signs that are gonna follow. And one of them is that they will speak in tongues. So this is something for everybody. In fact, in Acts chapter two, verse 38, the people on that first day of Pentecost, the day when the power of God and the Holy Spirit came upon the disciples for the first time, they all around heard them praising God in their own languages. I'm talking about people from all over the world had come to Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost. And as these guys, the disciples are filled with the Holy Spirit, they began to praise God in languages they didn't know how to speak. And people heard them praising God and talking about Jesus in their language. They're going, what is this? And, and uh, Peter gets up and he tells them about Jesus, died on the cross, rose from the dead. You didn't believe in him, but he really is the Messiah that came to save you. Then he said he would give us the Holy Spirit to empower us. This is what he's done. And in verse 38, they said, how do we get this too? What do we do? And in verse 39, Peter says this, repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of your sins in the name of Jesus. And you will receive the promise of the Father, this promise of the Holy Spirit. It's for you, for your children, and for those who are far off, and for all those that the Lord God shall call. In other words, this gift, this baptism of the Holy Spirit, and we know we get it when we speak in tongues, that is a gift that's for everyone. Everyone can have this. And it's for our prayer language to be able to pray on a daily basis, a regular basis, that when we don't know how to pray for things in English the best way, we pray and let the Holy Spirit pray through us. Isn't that amazing? And you know that Jesus talked about this before he went back to the Father in Luke chapter 11. He says, if you ask your earthly dad for bread, is he gonna give you a stone? No. If you ask your earthly father for a fish, is he gonna give you a scorpion or a serpent? No. How much more does your heavenly father love you than your earthly father? And if you ask him for the Holy Spirit, he's going to give you the Holy Spirit. In other words, what Jesus was saying there is he's saying he's, God's not going to give you something fake like a stone instead of bread. And he's not going to give you a serpent like something harmful or evil uh, when you're asking for something good like fish. He's going to give you the real Holy Spirit empowerment and the real gift of being able to pray in tongues when you ask him for it. How do you know you're saved? I'll tell you how you know you're saved. It's because when you read the Bible and the Bible says, he who uh, confesses with their mouth, Jesus is the Lord, believes in their heart, God raised him from the dead, they're going to be saved because the Bible says it. I believe that if I believe in him, I'm saved. In the same way, how do you know you're gonna receive this gift? When you ask him, he said he's gonna give it to you. All you gotta do is receive it. So it's a wonderful experience that you can pray for and ask the Father for. And it's something that Jesus wants you to have because we read in Luke 3, verse 15 and 16, that Jesus came to John the Baptist and he was going to get baptized. And John the Baptist looked at him and said, Behold the Lamb of God who's come to take away the sins of the world. I baptize you in water, but he comes that he might baptize you in the Holy Spirit and fire. And so Jesus is the one who gives it to us. If Jesus is the one who baptizes in the Holy Spirit and fire and power and we get this gift, it's a good thing, right? So this is something you seek for. Now remember in Acts 2, it says, they spoke in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. That's Acts 2 verse 4. If, if that's true, then it's not going to be that when you pray in tongues that your mouth, you know, he's going to uh, 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 move your mouth. You're going to speak as he enables you and it's going to be your voice, your tongue, you're, you know, it's going to be the same. You just open your mouth and you just release yourself to try. There's going to be uh, the utterance that comes after you start and you start speaking in that. So uh, we want to pray with you to receive this. You can receive it at home. You could receive it in a service. Hey, our elders are up front every single Sunday uh, right at the end of the service. You could go up to them and say, hey, would you pray with me? I'm seeking to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And they'll pray with you right there to receive it. And just like Paul prayed with the Ephesians, just like Peter prayed with at, at Cornelius' house in Acts 10, you can have people pray with you and you can receive. Or you could just be at home or driving in your car. I've had a lot of friends that they're doing that and just all of a sudden as they're praying and worshiping the Lord, they start speaking in languages that they don't understand and they just go, whoa, man, that's weird. And it's God. And it's awesome. The great thing about it is 1 Corinthians uh, 14, verse 13 through 15 says that anybody who speaks in tongues should also pray that they can interpret tongues. 
which means that you can actually ask God to tell you what he's praying through you in this other language, and he will tell you. So Paul says, this is how I pray every day. I pray in tongues and with English, you know, I or not English, in his own language and understanding English for us. I, I sing in tongues, and then I sing with my mind. You can do the same thing. You can pray in the spirit as you receive it and then say, God, give me the interpretation so I know what you're saying. And then what happens is God's praying 100% his will through you without your soul interference, without your emotions, without your mind, your thoughts, your fears interfering. It's 100% his will. And then you say, God, what am I praying for? What are you praying through me? And he'll tell you. And then when he reveals that to you, in your mind or through his word, you can then bring your will into submission to him. And man, talk about the most amazing life to be able to live life having God pray through you and then revealing to you what his will is for you. Are you kidding me? This is what God has done for us. He's not only saved us, but he says he wants to be so close to us that he wants to pray on our behalf and reveal it to us and lead us and guide us. Man, I'm telling you, this is the power of God that he wants to give to you and to help you to be able to lead people to him. What an amazing gift God wants to do. Just start seeking for him to give the Holy Spirit to you, and he will, all right? So go to our elders and let them pray for you. Whoever is working with you and doing discipleship with you, they can pray for you. You can just start praying on your own. Those who ask are gonna receive. Those who seek will find. And those who knock, the door will be open. Those aren't my words. Those are the words of Jesus Christ himself in Matthew chapter 7, 7. You can trust it. So God, I pray you bless these people. Baptize them in your Holy Spirit and power. In Jesus' name, amen.